Hello, everybody. This is Mark Stepp, Chief Innovation Officer here at Realvolve. On the line with me, I also have Michael Fernahu, who is in charge of our uh, customer service and my backup for questions and stuff. Uh, to uh, get this webinar started, we're going to cover a few ground uh, rules and, and items real quick. On the control panel, the go to webinar control panel, you should see an area called questions. Uh, please, please, please open up that questions area. Uh, go ahead and type in any questions that you may have. We did get some questions submitted to us prior to the webinar, so we will kind of go through those. But as questions come up, uh, certainly um, get those taken care of as well from you guys. So we, we really want to um, you know spend the time, um, help educate you on things that you want to know about. So the premise of the fireside chat is really just that, allowing you guys to ask questions and me to try to come up with the correct answer. <laughs> uh, so uh, the, uh, for the most part, I should know the, the answers, but uh, just in case I do have uh, Michael that can help me along with some of the things as well. So um, at this point, you should see my screen. Uh, we um, kind of got started with uh, a permission item that uh, Mac popped up and it wasn't being cooperative, but for whatever reason, uh, I was able to get out and get restarted. So we should be good to go there. If you don't see my screen, uh, make a shout out or, or whatever, and we'll go ahead and continue from there. So um, like I said, we're gonna go ahead and cover some of the questions that were pre-typed in, but please go ahead and type in all your questions in the questions box. Um, this mess, this uh, webinar is being recorded. So if you aren't able to stay on the whole time, but want to be able to see it, we will post this later. Um, if you've registered, you should get an email saying that the, um, uh, the recording is available as well. So and it'll be on our Facebook uh, post as well. There'll be a little link to it from there as well as our YouTube channel. So if you've not been to any of those, please make sure you do. For those people that are brand new to Realvolve, I do want to uh, point out a few things that are going to be helpful for you. Down, um, down at the bottom, we've got some menu items, one of which is the live chat support. If you have any kind of problem, challenge, uh, type thing that you need help with during normal business hours. You can click on the live chat support. It'll pop up, allow you to chat with um, our technical support guys. They are awesome. They know what they're doing. Um, and um, if they don't know the answer, typically they'll reach out to uh, myself or uh, one of the engineers. So if uh, if you've got anything that is pressing and crucial and it's during business hours, definitely click on the live chat support and you'll be able to get there. If it's after hours or if it's really not that pressing, you just need an answer, you can click on submit a support ticket. There you'll be able to um, ask questions, post screenshots, that type of stuff. And then um, the the uh, support team will respond to you uh, fairly quickly. I mean, they 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 are on top of those. If uh, if you're just wanting to kind of look around and find out what types of things you can do, you can also go to our help screen. The help screen itself is our website um, help huh, item, and there we are. Um, we do have a section on here for uh, getting started. And in the getting started area, there's some really good uh, documents uh, that you can print off if you're if your person likes to have printed material. Uh, we've got a workflow tutorial, um, a list of merge fields, and a whole bunch of just documentation on different things that most people want to know about right away. So definitely take a look at those. You can also search in the help screen for certain keywords, just there's something that you want to know about, calendar, database, adding contacts, that type of stuff, you can do a search and it'll bring up um, the different help related items uh, that go along with that. So those are uh, two of the initial things. One other thing that I want you to be aware of, if you have not been there yet, you can go to uh, training, 
www.realvolve.com. And this is our uh, training site in which we've got lots of videos um, that are linked to different topics. The ones that I want you to spend, if you're brand new to Real Evolve, things that I really want you to spend some time on uh, fairly quickly, they're, they're not that long, but go through them. The key concepts. Key concepts will help you understand why the screen's laid out the way it is and how to do some initial filtering and searching and some of the, the terminology things that uh, we talk about whenever we're doing any kind of help or uh, screenshots or whatever we may represent we may say something about the list view or the work view and those are all all in there we've got a section for the contact database just you know how to put in contacts your past clients your leads uh, other agents and stuff so definitely spend some time there and then um, each of the different areas um, have their own kind of parts and pieces that you can uh, can take now you do have to register now whether you are a realvolve user or not a realvolve user you can come in here you can create your own login registration to this and be able to go through the training so if you've got an assistant or a va or something like that you don't have them in the in realvolve yet they can still come in here and do the training or just somebody that you think uh, might be interested in they can certainly come over here and do the training they just have to click on the register it'll send you a little email with some the basic information just make sure that you go through the the steps for creating it this is a different login than your realvolve login so let you know about that um so let's go ahead and get started um with some of the questions so some of these were the ones that we um, have put in here, and, and I'm also seeing some that are coming up. So I'll go ahead and hit the ones that were coming up um, as well here. Uh, what's the easy, easiest way to import a newsletter into Realvolve? So whenever we have, I guess the question there is, is actually, let me see if I can see the full question. Uh, we're creating a newsletter in Wix right now. Okay, cool. So that answered my, my initial question. So at the top of the screen of Realvolve, you've got four main menu items. You've got your dashboard, your calendar, your workflows, and your templates. Now, workflows and templates work hand in hand with each other typically. But uh, whenever you're talking about some kind of newsletter, you're talking about some kind of uh, uh, message that's going out, it's the medium itself, is, it could be an email, a text message, or whatever, um, you could have a, a template that needs to be created, in which case you're saying you're creating something with Wix to, uh, to be able to send out. Now, I'm gonna caution you on this. Uh, just because it's website appropriate doesn't necessarily mean it's email appropriate. Um, HTML is HTML, but not all email readers can read all website HTML designs. So just something to be cautious there. If I send something to Google, for the most part, it's going to, it, Gmail, uh, it, it, for the most part, it's going to be viewable. But if it's an older email reader, Outlook versus Outlook 365 or something like that, you could get some difference in the way it looks. So you gotta be really cautious on that. But um, if you're designing something within Wix or any other platform, maybe it's, um, Adobe, um, they've got an, an HTML editor or some other website that creates different types of templates for you. The ultimate uh, piece that once it's all done, said and done, is going to be an HTML layout of some sort. So whenever you come into the templates area, you can click on the new template, say author new template, and hit continue. This will open up a blank template area for you to put your stuff in. So maybe you have a December newsletter. Down here, I'm gonna recommend that you choose, if it's a newsletter type thing, 
recommend that you put it in as a use with contact, meaning I'm going to be sending this out through my contact database. And the other option being either a property or transaction. So maybe if you're creating something for a property flyer and you want to bring in some of those property information, you could do that, but you are you are limited to sending it out from that property if you're doing it a property or same type of thing, transaction. It really wouldn't make as much sense for transaction, but uh, I want to say we're going to send this out through the contacts and you can give it some kind of, of uh, subject. So, you know, December, 2019 newsletter. Okay, so from here, normally you just come in here and start typing in and creating your message. If you've got some kind of template of some sort, no matter where it's coming from, you can click on this source button. In the source button, it's going to have some basic junk in here, HTML stuff, which looks kind of foreign if you're not used to HTML, but it is standard. HTML. You can take out what's in here, just totally wipe it out. Take whatever source that was given to you through Wix, through Adobe, through wherever, paste it right in here. Once you paste it in there, uh, click back on source, you'll be able to see kind of the preview of whatever it is. So I have like a template here of of things that I've created. This is just some kind of basic uh, template. Hello, it can contain whatever. But if I go and look at the source, you'll see it's got all this HTML mumbo jumbo. And again, if you're not used to HTML, it's it's not going to make a lot of sense to you. But if somebody's providing that information to you, um, you can just paste it right in there. Once you paste it in there, you click on source, you should be able to see whatever it is. So, you know, pretty much any kind of template that you create can be put in here and utilized for whatever purpose that you want. So, hope that answers the question. Uh, another question. Yes, go ahead. Yeah, I was going to say that we got a question here about. Um, account and tra uh, the transactions not showing up on the volume chart correctly. So what are the what are the different things that you need to have lined up when you're adding a transaction to make sure that it shows up? And um, there are some other related questions that were more just about adding a new property, a new transaction. So maybe if you can go through some highlights on that, I think we went in depth on that maybe on our last fireside chat. Um, take it from there. Okay. Awesome. Yeah, I can do that. So um, within a transaction, okay, uh, take one step back and like, especially for the new people, make sure we understand terminology real quick. Contacts, that's that's our contact database. That's going to be everybody, uh, everybody that's anybody. If you've got, uh, I, I can't say politically correct. Um, uh, if, <laughs> if you're a person <laughs> of some sort, uh, you should be put in there, whether you are a contact, uh, excuse me, a client, a past client, an agent, a lender, whatever. You can put your people, anybody to a, a, a person, into your contact database. Once they're in there, you're going to have a section for properties. And this is for your personal listings. If you are the listing agent for um, a given property, you can put them in and it's going to be shown here. If you are a buyer's agent only on a property, you don't even have to worry about the property side at all. That's again, just for if you're the listing agent pretty much. If you are representing the buyer, you can put information straight into the transactional information so that you can just click on the little plus, say add a new transaction. If you are a, um, a listing agent and you come over here and say, for instance, we have this uh, 917 and it's currently active. Um, once a property is active and it has to go from active to pending, meaning I've got a buyer of some sort, it's going to come up with this question, would you like to add a transaction? At this point, it will create the transaction for you from that property that that we're, we're creating. And so it's saying, you know, would I like to add it? I can say, yes, I don't want to create an expiration on that right now, but it goes ahead and creates the transaction. So 
the, the first thing that you want to make sure of is if you want information on your dashboard that you've got it as a transaction, okay? Um, in order for it to be a transaction, there are a few things that have to be there. Number one, we need a sales price. Um, just, you know, you, you gotta know what the volume is. So gotta have a sales price. Uh, what's the closing day? So if I'm gonna close on the 31st, um, I can put that in there and, and we're good. So I need to know what is my closing date. Otherwise, if I don't have a closing date on there, it doesn't know where to put it. So it doesn't put it anywhere. So we have to have a closing date within the, the correct date range whenever we're looking at our, our dashboard and all the controls. Now, under the commissions area, there's a section here called transaction type. And it's important to identify, am I representing the seller, the seller, am I handling the selling side only, the buying side, or am I handling both sides? If, if you're um, both a buyer's agent and the listing agent on the same property. So that, that item needs to be selected um, for whatever you, whatever side you represent. Um, then you can come in here and you can put in all your your splits, your all your different information, whether it's uh, uh, three percent. You like to have thirty three percent, three percent, whatever. Well, based off of what this is selected, it's going to do some mathematics and stuff and and get in there for you. Um, we are in process of of designing a new screen, so. Um, this will change sometime, hopefully soon. I don't have a date on that yet, but um, dealing with some team splits and stuff as well. Um, once you have those items, it's all well and good, but we need one more thing. And that is the under the people tab, we have to make sure that the either the seller agent, if you're representing the seller, or the buyer agent, has your name in it as the either the buyer agent or the seller agent. And that the the important part of that is making sure that, um, I think I've got it under my team. Uh, maybe I don't. Uh, this is my my trainer side and I don't always have everything in there. So uh, let, me, let me do a Joe agent in here, Joe. There he is, or actually there was an assistant there. So Annie assistant, you'll see that Annie is one of our users uh, in, in this account. Um, she could log in and she could see all this information. So um, Annie has this little head and shoulders thing. If you, you can drag and drop, if, if Annie assistant, instead of being Annie assistant, maybe was the agent, I could come over here, drag and drop Annie in here. At that point then, as a user of Realvolve in this account, and if she is the buyer's agent, that information is now linked to her user. In which case, if I log in as Annie, then it will show up on her dashboard. So we have to have price, we have to have date, we have to know whether it's a buying, selling, or both, and we have to make sure that the, the people side of this is correctly selected. Because if it's not, I have to know which user in this account does this property apply to. You may be on a team and you've got multiple agents that represent multiple properties in different ways and their volumes have to be connected accordingly. If you're a single agent, um, uh, you, you still have to do it. it it's just a, a mandatory piece of properly linking a transaction to the, uh, the user actually the user to the transaction. And then once that's in there, all of your uh, charts and stuff will accurately represent. So your, your volume now is connected to you, your commissions is connected to you, your average sales price and average commission is all connected. And if you come down here to um, the, if you are an administrator and you have access to the team reporting, then those numbers will be accurately represented as well. So. Hope that helps. Shannon, let us know if uh, we missed anything on that. Lindsay's got a question here asking, back on the commissions tab, 
what if you have a commission of maybe 3% on the first 100,000 and 1.5% 1 on the remainder? Yeah. Um, unfortunately, at this point, we don't handle that. I do have that in my design for our engineers to handle. I know a lot of the, the Canadian users do that exact same thing. She's probably Canadian, but or Lindsay could be a male. Um, but in, in either case, um, the the calculation on that what you can do um lindsay is just go in there and instead of doing the calculation automatically you can just come down here and just overwrite it with whatever the net commission is that that you need and it should uh, take care of it so it'll use the 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 volume up here but this whatever commission is so it, i can overwrite this and not use the mathematics if if you so are so inclined and in which case if you've got a special case like that where it's um only up to the first hundred thousand one percent and then another percent after that you've uh, you'll have to do that manually sorry we but we will be getting that taken care of um, uh, about, uh tenants so if we if we're representing a tenant for a rental how sure. what's the best practice for using transactions with that so um, in that particular case, you've, you, you know, technically you're representing the seller, I guess, in, in that case, or the buyer, you, you pick how you want that represented. Uh, dealing with your commissions and stuff, you can do the same thing. The important piece on that is going to be, instead of it being a seller buyer type thing, um, you can add a party member and choose tenant from the list. So you got a tenant, tenant two, three, and four. Um, add that to the list, and then be able to um, select tenant right there. Um, I do know that there was a previous question about how do you add a contact without going back into your contacts area. So these boxes that that are here are used for draggables. So if if the person already exists, I can just click and drag and, and put them in there. So no big deal. If it's somebody that's brand new, you don't have them in the database yet, you can just, it says here, click to add a new contact. So you click into that box and then you start typing in the name. Um, Geo and last name Smith and home number 555-1212 and then hit save. At that point, it puts Geo in there. Um, if you want to go to that contact, you can click on the little name link there, then you've got all access to all the, the information as well. Um, if for whatever reason you want to, um, instead of clicking on the name, it, it actually opens up that contact record in that same window. If I wanted to open up that name in a different window you can right click on it or if you're on a mac use two fingers um, and say open in a new window and it does the same thing where it opens up that same contact so that it's uh, available to you because i'm sharing screens it takes a little bit of time but uh, and then whatever changes you make in here will be uh, appropriately changed uh, in the other screens as well so that's how you add a new contact in there um, to the database. Uh, now, for the tenants, uh, we still have, uh, as far as commission issues, um, this was designed originally for buyer sellers, not as much for rentals. So you can still put in your rent information there, um, but um, uh, we do have plans for dealing with rentals as well in the next commission piece. Um, next question. How about when we're first getting started with Realvolve and we, we want to bring in some past transactions? So maybe walk through the uh, import properties, import transactions feature there. Okay, so uh, there are very few uh, databases out there that let you export the transactions. But if you do have one, um, you do have the ability under the settings area of Realvolve, 
you can, we've got a section here that says import contacts. It really ought to just be import because you can import contacts, properties, or transactions. Uh, basically, and I'm, actually it does say on here that you can import those as well. You can choose the CSV file. So let me, do, I don't know that I've got a good CSV file that I can utilize. A lot of these are, let me see. Uh, here we go. Uh, actually, here's. Uh, I'm going to grab this one. Um, this is an old file from um, some properties from another product. Um, what you'll see is that whenever you get a file of some sort, it could have both contacts and property type information, transactional information. Um, over here on the record type, for the most part, most of the time, you're just gonna be putting in primary contact, meaning it's I'm importing into the contact database. However, you have the ability to import into property or transactional uh, database as well. So if it's a transaction of some sort, it'll show you all the different transaction fields that you can import into. In which case, say, you know, street address, actually this is an ID, so I'm going to um, say not import that um, on the address field. So come over here, say transaction, address, full address or street address, um, city state zip, you put in all the different parts and pieces. A lot of times you'll have bedrooms and bathrooms and, and that type of stuff, you can import those into properties. Um, just whatever you find necessary that you can import. If we've got a field for it, you can pick it and, and import it. Once it's imported, then you'll be able to, to um, do any kind of editing and stuff to it in the either the properties or the transactions, depending on how you imported those. Now, the theory behind this is all great. Um, what you're going to find is it may be simpler just to go in there for a given year. because you don't really don't have to have all that information in there. Uh, it's good historical information, but um, unless that file contains notes and stuff like that, which you can import, it, it may not be worth the time to put it in there. But if you do put it in there, um, either through the import or through a manual import, Understand this, if it's just a listing, add it in as a property, okay? If you've, uh, if you've gone through the transactional portion of that, where you've got the buyers, the sellers, and stuff like that, you don't have to put in as a, a listing at that point. You could just put it in as a transaction, um, in which case, again, you're either putting in it as a representing the buyer or the seller, putting in what pertinent information that you need. So for the most part, for historical type information, I would just put in the transactional stuff. I don't, unless it's a property that's still active, you really don't necessarily need to put it in as a property. Hope that makes sense. Did you think that answered the question? Yeah, I believe so. Okay. Um, all right, there, there's a couple of questions and I'm, I'm, I'm kind of thinking of it this way, first things first. You know, when I'm getting into Realvolve and I'm trying to build out some templates, trying to build out some workflows, what are the things, and this is probably more of a best practices kind of question, um, but where would I want to dedicate my time? What templates might, might I want to create or what do I want to get out of the, the library? How do I get started? Sure. Okay, so this is kind of a loaded question. Um, it, and I say that because different people need different things. Um, I know agents that, you know, they they don't have business at all. So their emphasis is going to be getting in new leads, uh, getting them on workflows, that type of stuff. I've got some people that's like, man, I've got, I've got plenty of leads. I've got these 10 listings and I'm not able to keep up with them. I, I'm going through the marketing process. I'm going through pre-listing, you know, whatever. And I, and, and I'm just, I'm, I'm pulling my hair out because I don't know where I'm at on each one of them. And then we've got those people that say, well, you know, I, I've got 10 transactions in the, 
in the queue and I'm missing deadlines and stuff like that. So it really kind of depends on what emphasis do you want to work on. So that said, uh, pick whichever one is most pertinent for you at that moment. Go with one. It does. You don't have to do all three of them all at once, okay? And all three of them are very valid. All three of them are very necessary and needed. But you're not going to be able to do all three of them and and get through this. Um, if you are the the person that needs to deal with leads, definitely um, first thing I would do would be to import the contacts that you need start workflows um, on you know a few of those people at a time and and get to a point where you're um, you're sending out some emails you're sending out some text messages and stuff like that what that means though is we got to get the people in first then we need to come over here to the workflows and we need to start doing creating some workflows now you can create your own workflows or you can choose from our library. If you click on the plus on the on the in the workflows area, you click on the plus, um, you can create a new workflow for yourself or you can say add a workflow from the library. If you go to the library, if I choose workflow from the library, there are uh, I think we're at 260 some odd workflows that are available, I believe. I saw that number last time I was in there. Um, some of them are premium where that means basically you need a code from whoever created them they they may charge you for them they may be part of a coaching team um, they may give it to you whatever but if you go to look at any given workflow for whatever it is it's going to have some basic information um, in this case uh, for april uh, you could send april an email and uh, for 50 bucks she's going to sell you you know two workflows and uh, it's got uh, 23 activities total for uh, one, the one workflow for buyers, one workflow for sellers. Pretty simple. Uh, to install this type of thing, you'd have to contact April. She's going to uh, give you a code. And whenever you click on the install package, you can enter that code, click on install, and it'll install that. Uh, th that's for premium ones. Now, for public ones, uh, if you just go to a public one, if you click on the install package, it'll just install it. So uh, read through the description, see if it's something that you want. Uh, it's not easily uninstalled at this point. So one thing that I want to caution you of is, you know, going in there and just installing every public one that there is. While that does give you a bunch of workflows to have, it's also a bunch of workflows that you have to filter through. So just be cautious on on that read through see if it's what you want maybe contact the person that created them get some some information on it for you know whatever that you that you want once that workflow is created then whenever you come into the workflows area it's going to be listed in our list view area this is what i was talking about um so you've, you've got some filters up here i can see just my contact workflows by clicking on the little contact down at the bottom there's multiple pages of workflows that you can pick and choose from there is um, one of the free ones in there uh, i know we've got a lot of keller williams users but a lot of other people use these as well but there's a 33 touch point um, workflow in which case basically every week for 33 weeks you can send out an email and it's different things for different um, different topics for different things. So um, just some kind of connection of some sort. So you could start with something like this very easily just to hit your, your past clients with or new clients with or um, leads with, you know, create something like this. I do recommend that before you go using something like this, go into the workflow. You'll see that there is an action. In that action, um, it's going to show you which template uh, message that it's sending. You can click on this little preview button here and it's gonna open up that template in the template reader so you can look through it, you can modify it and change it. Please, 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 please do not 
just take whatever's in here and send it. Some of these could be templates from contacts that created it for themselves. They're expecting you to go in there and at least make some editorial changes, possibly removing their name from <laughs> uh, name and email address and stuff from the template. You don't want to be sending something that's not you to your contacts. So uh, I just cannot emphasize that enough. Make sure that it it contains the information information that you want. But you can come in here, you can change content, you can change sizes, you can do whatever you want uh, to this template to make it sound like you. Once you've made that change, click on the save button and then it's it'll be available for you to use anytime that you use that workflow. Um, so for those people that are just dealing with contacts, set up a contact workflow or download it from from um, the library and you know use those to your heart's content. For those people that are more in line with, hey, I've got to get myself organized because I've got properties, I've got transactions. The reality of this is it's the same process. It's just different data. So you can come in here, click on add your properties, add your transactions, add them as you need. And you don't have to add all your properties all at once. Maybe just add the, the newest important ones uh, that you've got. Once you've got some basic information in there, you can click on start a workflow. And again, there could be some workflows in there for you to use. Uh, maybe there's like um, listing, um, listing marketing. You know, this is one from Kindle Young Diggs. Um, this is a, a bigger suite that is available that, that you can purchase, but um, there's some free ones out there as well. Um, you click on next to start this workflow. You choose the activities that you want. Typically you want them all unless, hey, maybe I don't have HOA. It's not a referral uh, of any type. So, um, you know, it just take the, the items that you want. You click on next. Uh, it's gonna say, hey, who are the people in my account that are playing these roles? Who's my marketing assistant? Who's my assistant? And who's my listing coordinator? Well, if you're a lone agent, a, a single agent, all three of those are going to be your name. You, you're, you're wearing multiple hats today. Um, if you're a part of a team, you're going to be able to select it from your team members who plays what role. And then you click on next. The purpose of that is to assign the correct person to the correct job so that whenever an activity is assigned to that person, it comes up on their calendar, not yours. Um, putting in what milestone dates that you know. Um, if there are certain dates that you know, put them in. If you don't know them, you can leave them blank. And then the, you click on next and you say, okay, who are the different party members? Who's the seller, the photographer? Who's, uh, who's playing those roles? And then you click on done. Now, I'm not going to do that because I really don't know what all that's going to send out and do. But once I click on done, it will create all the activities for this one property for the listing marketing workflow. Then the magic happens. And what kind of magic is that? Well, all those activities for this one property get created in the, into the appropriate calendars of each of the users in Realvolve. Okay, I can go at that point, I can go and look at my calendar to see what all things are on my calendar to do at any given point in time. Um, if, it's, if it's on the list here, I can say, yeah, it's, it's something I've completed. If it's got actions to automatically send stuff, I can click on that, I can run that. It'll, it'll send the appropriate email to the appropriate party member um, and, and do all the magic that, that it's supposed to do. Um, once that activity is done, then it will show up as being completed. Um, in your calendar and um, on a day that doesn't have anything. Um, and uh, as you do them, it'll, it'll show them with this little diagonal line saying that it's, it's been completed. The, the sweet thing is, is this, you don't have to come to your calendar. All you really need to do every day within Realvolve is come to your dashboard, 
Now, your dashboard starts off with all these numbers and stuff on there. Um, it, just an easy way of getting rid of those is hitting this little arrow up here in the upper right corner. It hides all your charts and graphs. What's important is what, what's over here on the right-hand side, these activities. This will show you every activity that is assigned to you that is either due today or was due previously that didn't get done. So my goal every day, I've got three items today. So um, apply the follow-up to the past client follow-up plan. Uh, I can start that workflow, which basically takes, um, it takes this activity for John, uh, Johnny Cash, and we'll apply another workflow for him. This is just a sample. So if I wanted to start that, I could click on run, and then it goes and it starts that workflow and, and completes that activity for me. So then it knocks it off the list. Um, same type of thing for the next one. So I'm just gonna skip all of these. I'm just gonna say that they're done. So at the end of the day, when all, everything is all said and done, you should have nothing in your list right here. You can go home, be with your family, enjoy life because you know you've got everything done. That's the purpose. Workflows are there to help create the design, the plan of what you want done for every contact, every listing, every pre-listing, every task that you do for uh, contract to close. That's the workflow. The templates are those things that you send out. That's part of the workflow. So those two tie together. Whenever you take those workflows and you apply them to a, a contact, a property or a transaction accordingly to what you're needing done, then every day your list of activities are going to show up on your list over here. And as you complete them, they get knocked off your list. So now I don't have to go to my stack of folders, my, my, my folders of every property that I've got listed, of every closing that I've got, open it up, look through my checklist to see what tasks do I need to do today, what tasks have I already done, and I run the risk of missing something in my list, closing that folder, going to the next one. You don't have to do all that. All you have to do is come into Realvolve, you look at what's on your activities list, and you complete them. So then if you are um, Annie assistant. Now, I don't know that Annie has anything in here. I need to check that probably. If I log in as Annie, um, yeah, actually Annie has some things to do for uh, a different property. So I, if I want to find out what property, find out what information, I can click on that, that property and it'll take me to that property. Um, I can see all the different activities that are that are due. So some of these things are, are supposed to be done by Sam. Some are supposed to be done by Joe. Some are supposed to be done by Annie Assistant. So uh, lots of things. This is just one that hasn't gotten done the way it should have gotten done. It's just an old, um, an old listing. But as you complete these activities um, for each person on your team, they are, um, you know, no matter what if you haven't put in your, your team members yet, that's what I want to show you here. If you go in under your settings, um, there's a section here for users and permissions. Make sure that you, you add in all of your users. Um, you basically invite a new user, put in their email address, it'll create a new um, email to that person. They'll be able to put in their login information, then they can log in. At that point, you now have these additional people that you can assign to your workflows to let them do their job. And it's as easy as that. I mean, I, I went through a lot there, so it, there's more to it. <laughs> but um, understand that the, the premise of Realvolve is to help organize you and to get you to a point where all you have to do is identify the things that need to get done. So did I order the photography? Yes, I did, if I'm logged in as Annie. Uh, did I do the uh, keys and lockbox? Um, well, there's more to this one. This one actually has a checklist. Did I make copies of those keys? Did I uh, install the combo the combination? Install Supra? Did I register that with um, uh, ChemWeb, whatever that is? Um, and then uh, note the location of the lockboxes. So 
uh, if I if I only mark off four of those five items and I hit save, it's not done because it requires all of those checklist items to be done. Oh yeah, I did actually do that. Or you know what? Um, for whatever reason, I don't need to make copies. They were already made or whatever. I can mark something out. As long as it's not an unchecked item, um, as long as there's no unchecked checklist items, then that one activity is considered done. I hit save and close, and then that activity goes away. So every day, all I'm having to do is make sure that I complete those items. I click run. I'm actually going to skip this one. At the end of the day, I want to see my activities that's being blank. If they're red, they're past due. If they're black, they're due today. That's it. So if uh, if I need to change a date, so we, I've already started the workflow and the inspector calls, they've got to delay the inspection by two days. Uh, what do I do? Yeah, so, okay, here's the great thing and, and just the amazing thing about workflows. Say in the workflow that you've got certain things that have to get done. I shouldn't have done that. Um, let, me, uh, let me go back. Uh, within the workflow, you've got certain things that have to get done from certain milestone dates. Maybe there's something that you do uh, two days before inspection. Maybe there's something that you do five days after inspection, whatever. Well, if you've started that workflow, all those items are going to be in the activities list of that, of that property or transaction. What you can do is go to the transactions area, if it's a transactional thing, come to the, the field that's needed. Now, this one doesn't have any workflows started or, or done anything, but let's say, for instance, um, financial contingency or closing date. Well, let's just do closing date. So I don't have, actually, I do have home inspection, actually, right here, home inspection contingency, home inspection date. So the inspector says, hey, I can't make it. Of course, this is since this 2016. This is an old one. Um, I can't make it today. So let's say today today was um, the due date for, for this item. Um, I can just come in here, or maybe he's going to say, I can't make it on the, on the 19th. It maybe it's supposed to do on the 19th. I can make it on the 17th instead. So you come here to the 17th. All you do is change that one date. If there are any workflows, that use the home inspection date as its milestone date, say two days before home inspection, that activity two days before in, uh, home inspection would now be set to the 15th. If it's five days after the home inspection, then that date's gonna be set. If I change it right here to a different date, all those activities that are based off of that home inspection date get changed for this one property or transaction. That's all you gotta do. And then for the appropriate activity that's assigned to the appropriate user, it'll show up on their calendar on the appropriate day, whatever that new day is. That answer? Mark, can you give us the uh, five minute version on contact cross section? Five minute version. Uh, <laughs> I will try my best. Um, actually, contact cross section is actually very simple. Um, there are the 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 idea behind the contact cross section is making sure that nobody is left behind. So think of this first off. You have workflows that should be running. Okay, those workflows should be constantly communicating with your 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 contacts, your buyers, your sellers, or whatever. Let's say, for instance, a, a new contact comes in through your website, they get zapped into Realvolve, it starts a workflow, and um, it gets added to the database, okay? So at that point, that is a, what I would consider a suspect that is aware of you, that they visited your, your uh, website, and it's in here. As you start communicating with them and sending emails, they start responding. They go from suspect to prospect, prospect to lead. Um, eventually, they sign on the dotted line, and now they're a client. Um, they go through the transactional process. They close. Now they're a past client. 
um, all through that process, they're kind of going up and to the right uh, uh, from aware of you to knowing you to liking you. Typically, people that like you do business with you. So you'll, you'll typically get into that, that range where they do like you. And then whenever they start referring business to you or they do multiple transactions with you, um, they'll, they'll, they trust you. Okay. And, and they'll show up there. So the purpose of this is to show you those people that are that are suspect, prospect, lead, client, or pros, uh, past clients that are aware, no like, or trust. So it's a cross section of these people. And it's saying, hey, how many people ha are that are currently in my database that are a client that like me that I've not contacted for some ungodly reason? They, they maybe weren't on my workflow. Um, so if I click on that, it's gonna show me, hey, Mary Newsletter, which is just a sample name that I put in there. Uh, Mary Newsletter, she has not been contacted. Last called was 611 days ago. Man, you screwed up. You've not contacted her in, in three years or two years, uh, almost two years. So you need to be contacting her. Well, what you can do is click on that record there gives you phone numbers, stuff, you can dial, you can call, uh, you can come over here, you can add a note real quick, you can send an email, you can send a text. Oh man, you know, actually, you know what? I actually did call her. I called her uh, last week on, on actually, let me go here to today. Um, save that. Uh, let, me, let me say, I did actually call her on the third. At that point now, um, it'll put the third in into her last call date. And whenever I click on the back button, um, it should actually, hmm. oh, 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 okay. okay. So I shouldn't have gone back that far. For this particular client area, I do have it set, make sure you call them every week. So um, I went back too far on that one. Uh, so it, it's showing again. So say, let's say the sixth, okay, instead. So it's not that many days. So then it knocks her off the list. So what qualifies them to be put on this list? You can go in under settings and under the um, set default fields. We have a section here called dashboard. And in the dashboard, We've got these numbers that are signed up. So the way I have this set up for me, and you can change it, set it however you want. If you don't care about that particular thing, you can put zero in there and it won't find find that person at all. But basically what it's saying is if, if I've got somebody in my database that is a suspect, I personally want to make sure I'm calling them every two days. And if for whatever reason I don't call them or uh, did some kind of either personal phone call or personal visit with them in the past two days, I want them to show up on that cross section. Whether it's the where, no lack or trust, it doesn't matter. If they're a suspect, I'm gonna, basically I'm, I'm in communication with them um, and I'm sending them stuff back and forth. I'm gonna be a little bit more lax, maybe it's three days. For leads, at least every seven days. My current clients, I wanna make sure I'm, I'm calling or visiting with them every, and, and that's, current clients, ones that you're currently doing stuff with, you should have a workflow on them. And it should, it really should never reach this point, technically, you know, whatever, whatever number you put in there, if you personally want to communicate with them every two weeks, you could do it that way. I, I recommend every, every week. Um, if they're a past client, by default, it's going to be 120 days. So they go from seven days, uh, to 100, 120 days in my system, you can set it to whatever you want. If, however, they're a past client and they are an A, they're my A group, well, they're a little bit more important. And because they're a little bit more important, I want to communicate with them more frequently than 120, maybe every two months, every three months for my Bs, every four months for my Cs. And for Ds, depending on how what you're using it for, maybe Ds are people you don't ever want to contact. So maybe you set them for zero. Yeah, I don't, whatever you, however you represent your ABCD. 
But basically what that does then is that will then go through your database, looks for the last uh, call date or last personal visit, those two dates. And if those dates are filled in and you've got them in as suspect, prospect, lead, client, past client, and aware, no lack or trust, they will then show up on your list if they're over that that breaking point. In this case, uh, Rebecca, I've not contacted her in you know 1,600 days. But you know, wow, boy, did I screw up. So that's the reason for the cross section. Technically, your people really should never really show up because your workflows should be communicating with them. But if for whatever reason this is a fail safe, it it, it prevents those people from falling through the cracks. Is that under five minutes? I don't think so. <laughs> it was close. Um, cool. There's a, a couple of questions I'll hit real fast just for time's sake. Uh, one question was about uh, the Android app coming up. And we've got a mobile, a new mobile app coming for both Android and iPhone. That's about to go into beta. There we go. Quick preview. And uh, we're we're really hoping to have that launched into the public by the end of the year um, but really good stuff equal apps um, you're gonna have to do like the 30 second version here mark <laughs> yeah so uh, android and iphone these are, are just two emulators that i'm showing here they are identical besides size uh, the size of the screen is different um, uh, the ability to you know do some stuff with your dashboard your contacts um, viewing your contacts. Uh, you can filter your contacts. I've filtered with just a certain list here. Um, you can uh, get your properties, your transactions. Um, you can see you know, the, the information there for each one of those. Um, you can start workflows. Uh, you can go to your calendar. Your calendar is you know, showing the, the things that, that are either due today that's on your list um, or that are past due. Um, in which case you can you know see them as you uh, click on items you can see the information on them uh, there can be checklists on them um, that have to be done actions that need to be run uh, if there's notes you can see the notes that are on anything if there's multiple people connected to it if there's a person connected to it you can click on that contact make phone calls and stuff um, if there's more than one person you can see all the people uh, select a person um, that type of stuff is is all there. So, a lot of cool things that are getting ready to happen. I've been working hard on on the mobile piece for you guys. I know that um, our Android app in the past has been uh, very lacking, uh, especially when compared to our iPhone. Um, but we're adding a lot of new uh, features and and pieces to to both of them. So, uh, hang in, hang in there. It's oh, and this is why I don't have it released yet. Um, uh, there's still a few small bugs of different things. Actually, this one works. Um, there's uh, a, you know, a lot of things that that are coming up um, very soon. So hang hang in tight there. Um, training Anastasia, I, I would definitely start a training.realvolve.com account. I'm not sure if you were on the webinar when Mark mentioned that. And as far as order, you know, start with that getting started section first, and then um, you're your core blocks, you're, you're going to want to start with things like contacts, properties, transactions, and really build from there. Uh, or there's the key concepts video as well. So check that out. Um, I also, also really like, and this isn't videos, but that training documents that you've got up on the other tab there, Mark. Um, there's a whole PDF library that you can go through. I know he mentioned that at the beginning. So check that out. And there was another question about getting one-on-one -on -one training. And so, um, you know, that that obviously is costly for us to be able to provide one-on-one -on -one training. So we do do our best to offer you a lot of um, free options. So whether that's online self-paced training or classes like this, but if you are looking for that more premium level one-on-one, -on -one, we do have some options for that. And you can email over to sales at realvolve.com for that, uh, or you can even email me directly, Michael at realvolve.com. And either way, we'd be happy to answer any questions you might have about getting you set up with a trainer. Awesome. Well, I hope that was beneficial. Um, my voice is about to give out, so it, 
must mean we're done. <laughs> um, thank you guys for you know entrusting us with um, being your your CRM of choice. I know there's a lot of choices out there. Um, I feel very um, um, uh, very humbled by you know all the the positive responses that we've got from our CRM. And I just want to be there to, to help you guys. So um, hope this is helpful. If there's anything else you need from us, uh, contact our support team. And um, for that, this is a wrap. So have a great uh, holiday and we will talk to you later. Thanks. Bye.